good afternoon today we will continue with what we were doing in the last lecture that is discuss the topic of interest rates and capital account yesterday we saw uh, the discussion on mundell fleming framework the mundell fleming model which said that uh, the capital flows are a function of the domestic interest rates and the foreign interest rates so <coughs> if the domestic interest rates exceeds the foreign interest rates there will be capital inflows if the domestic interest rate is lower than the foreign interest rate then it will lead to the outflows of the capital now we'll see how uh, this particular thing impacts the the stable set of instruments for achieving our policy targets so i'm going back to the equations for the yy and the uu curve uu curve is something which we'll introduce today and the yy curve is the curve which gives different combinations of expenditure policy and in and the exchange rate which uh, gives you the internal balance so uh, the equation for the yy curve shows you if you work on the this particular equation where the changes in income is a function of the private expenditures the policy induced expenditures and the autonomous changes in the net exports <coughs> daa is dia minus dsa autonomous change in investments and uh, autonomous change in savings d means the changes so dia minus dsa is daa dag comprises of variables which depict monetary and fiscal policy this is dd where d is g minus t and you have the interest rates th that is dr and sr is the the impact of the rate rate of interest on savings i is the investments which is a function of rate of interest savings as a function of rate of interest so this is dag plus this dna part is bifurcated into entirely autonomous term dna dash and something which is a function of the exchange rate comprising of the marshall learner robinson condition that is e pi which is greater than 0 e pi was uh, even star plus e2 minus 1 so uh, i'm sure you are familiar with this equation because this is what we have been discussing for long now for the equation for the yy curve if you solve for dr you would get this to be 1 upon sr minus ir daa plus dg minus dt plus p1 c1 star e pi pi dot plus dna dash minus dy sy s plus n now if you draw the two sets of diagrams one is you have expenditure policy which is tax rates and interest rates both club together and here you have pi the exchange rates then this yy curve is an upward sloping curve because if you see the relationship between the expenditure policy that is tax rates and interest rates and pi uh you you would you would get an upward sloping y y curve so if i had carried on uh, by having 
by not bifurcating d a g and if I would have uh, from here expressed d a g as a function of the other variables, I would have got the y y curve, because this shows the relationship between the tax rates and interest rates and pi. We are now interested in getting another curve, which is the u u curve, which also shows different combinations of interest rates and exchange rate, which will maintain the internal balance. Now, this where you have rate of interest on the y axis and exchange rate on the x axis, sorry there is a small correction instead of pi you have the tax rates in the x axis you have the tax rates on the y axis you have the interest rates. So, uh, this shows different combinations of rate of interest and tax rates, which will maintain the, the internal balance. Now, you can see from this equation, the relationship between the interest rates and the tax rates. And you can see that the interest rates and tax rates are inversely related. and why it is downward sloping because if you increase the tax rates it reduces the aggregate demand in the economy it reduces incomes so the only way to increase the incomes is to reduce the interest rates because that will promote investments and incomes and so you are you will be back to equilibrium We are going to now work on the equation for f f curve and x x curve. <coughs> recall the equation for the changes on in the net trade balance it was equal to s upon s plus m d n a minus m upon s plus m d a a plus d a g. the d n is equal to s upon s plus m, you have the autonomous component, the induced component and this is further policy induced expenditure is further divided into d d minus s r minus i r d r So, you see this equation uh, now uh, when we have introduced the Mundell Fleming framework, <coughs> x 
n plus k is equal to 0, that means along the FF curve, we had a balance of payment equilibrium. The current account balance if it is matched by capital inflows, it leads to the balance of payment equilibrium. So, this short balance of payment equilibrium. So, d n plus d k was equal to 0. Now, further we we introduce that this capital, capital flows is a function of the differential interest rates. So, that is the difference between the F f and the y y curves that we got earlier and now we have introduced capital which is a function of the, the domestic interest rates and the foreign interest rates. And we are going to put it in, in this equation and see how uh, we will get another set of curve which, is, which will be called the x x curve. So, I am going to move from here to this part of the blackboard to get the equation for the f f and the x x curve.
Now, please focus your attention on this particular equation that I get right? and also recall uh, the, the diagram that I made yesterday where I related the interest rates with the nominal exchange rates. I was trying to convince you that in case the economy keeps using interest rates for maintaining inter ba internal balance and use exchange rate for maintaining external balance. And if you have capital inflows which are a function of the interest rates, then it brings instability in the system. And then I was trying to tell you that this F f curve slope is less than the slope of the y y curve in the wake of the capital flows where capital flows are a function of the interest rates. <coughs> so, if you had recall the diagram that we discussed yesterday, we said that there is an increase in labor force. Increase in labor force leads to an increase in target level of income when it leads to an increase in target level of income, you need to have less restrictive expenditure policies to achieve that higher level of incomes. It would mean that your y y curve shifts down and it reaches y dash y dash. This is your new equilibrium point. So, here is an economy which is open in the sense that the capital flows are coming in, they are a function of the differential interest rates. It is a flexible exchange rate regime, so you cannot move out of the F f curves and then something else happens, there is a shock in the system that there is an increase in labor force. So, now uh, you were earlier here, the new equilibrium point is p dash. <coughs> you in this scenario, when you have capital inflows, this will bring instability in the system, because now the point p is above the y dash y dash curve. So, you have unemployment in the economy. So, you need less restrictive expenditure policy. So, you reduce the interest rates and you find a corresponding point on the F f curve, which will be somewhere here. You cannot be out of the F f curve, because this is a flexible exchange rate regime. So, you move from not, you do not move from p to p dash, but you move to an instable, unstable point like p double prime. P double prime is a point which is below the y dash y dash curve. You have a situation of inflation, so you adopt more restrictive expenditure policy. So, so you have to reach a point like this, but you cannot be out of the F f curve. So, you have to find a corresponding point on the F f curve, which will be somewhere here. So, you if you keep moving, you will move you will never reach a point like p dash, because uh, this capital inflows brings instability in the system in, in the light of the flexible exchange rate. So, then the stable instrument, the set of stable instruments changes, when you have capital inflows, which are a function of interest rates. You cannot have, have a monetary policy for maintaining internal balance and an exchange rate for maintaining external balance. You need to change the set of instruments. So, what we will see is that now, in the light of the capital flows, these stable set of instruments are that the monetary policy, that is the interest rate goes for maintaining the external balance and 
tax that is the fiscal policy goes for maintaining the internal balance. Another point here the f f the slope of the f f curve is less than the y y curve. You can see this from the fact that as some of you did say after the class yesterday that sir that the capital flows the capital flows are a function of the interest rates. Now, when capital flows become a function of this differential interest rates and you put it here, you get the rate of interest as a function of these variables and if you relate rate of interest with pi that is what we are doing here. Please have a look at the slope which is S r minus I r plus K r, where K r is K times S plus m by m. So, it is a positive number. So, your slope if you compare it this is the equation for the equation for the f f curve and compare it with the with the slope of the y y curve which shows relationship between interest rates and pi you will see that the slope hmm. slope here is higher than the slope slope of this line which is the relationship between interest rates and pi. And then of course, there is a, a negative relationship between pi and the interest rates. Now, in the wake of the capital flows which are a function of the differential interest rates, we find that the stable set of instruments are different they are no longer expenditure policy and pi. The stable set of instruments are that this expenditure policy is now bifurcated, fiscal policy goes for maintaining internal balance, interest rates goes for maintaining the external balance. And you keep the exchange rate as fixed, you study the relationship between interest rates and tax rates. Now, again there are two sets of curves one is the u u curve and the other is the x x curve. The u u curve shows different combinations of interest rates and tax rates which will give you internal balance. So, this is the internal balance curve and you have the x x curve which is the external balance curve. Please see that both of them are downward sloping. Earlier our internal balance curve was an upward sloping curve, it was called y y curve. So, y y curve has been replaced by the u u curve which is downward sloping and you have the x x curve which has got a lower slope than the u u curve. Why are they downward sloping? First look at the internal balance curve they are downward sloping because if you increase tax rates it would lead to a decline decrease in aggregate demand it leads to a decline in incomes. So, if you have to raise the incomes bring back the economy back to equilibrium you have to reduce the interest rates. Okay. You have the x x curve which is also downward sloping because if you reduce tax rates it increases incomes. When you increase incomes it would lead to increase in imports. When it when there are increase in import it leads to a balance of payment deficit. Now, uh, if you have to take care of the balance of payment deficit then you need to lower the interest rates for maintaining the external balance. Now, the difference is that this interest rates they tend to have an impact not only on absorption not only on absorption, but also on the balance of payments. 
Now, please look at this equation again and try to understand the relationship between interest rates and now not pi, but the taxes which is d t. So, again you see that the relationship between interest rates and taxes they are negative and it comes with a slope which is s r minus i r plus k r. So, you have a lower slope for the x x curve as compared to the u u curve which shows relationship between the rate of interest which shows the relationship between the rate of interest and the taxes again you have a negative relationship, but then you you have a slope which is higher than the slope here which is s r minus i r plus k r. So, then the point at which they intersect this will give you the optimal level of rate of interest and tax rates which will maintain both internal and external balance. Now, given this equilibrium there is something which happens in the economy that that shock is again an increase in the labor force. So, when there is an increase in labor force it leads to an increase in target levels of income the only way to take care of this increased income is to reduce the interest rates, have less restrictive expenditure policies. So, your u u curve shifts to u dash u dash. So, your new equilibrium point where you get both internal and external balance is not p is now p dash. So, you have this new internal balance curve u dash u dash and you are now in a situation the economy is above the u dash u dash curve a point which is above the u dash u dash curve depicts that you have unemployment in the economy. It is a point on the x x curve. So, there is no problem of the balance of payment you are on the x x curve. So, there is a balance of payment equilibrium, but because there is an increase in labor force, you are in a position where the economy faces unemployment. So, what do you do about it? If you have unemployment in the economy, you need to raise the incomes, because by raising incomes it will take care of this unemployment in the economy. So, what you do is that from here you reduce the tax rate, so that you reach a point on the u dash u dash curve. So, you reduce your tax rates in the hope that it will take care of the internal balance, but then once you reach here you are below the x x curve. Below the x x curve shows a situation where you have a deficit in the economy why? Because any point below the x x curve you have a deficit, because uh, if you have lower interest rates you will have higher incomes, higher incomes would lead to higher imports you will have a deficit. If it is above f f you have higher interest rates, lower incomes, lower expenditures, lower imports you have a balance of payment surplus. But now, you have reached a point like this, you are below the f f curve, you have a balance of payment deficit. So, if you have to take care of the deficit, now the new instrument which is available to you is the interest rates, 
reason being that interest rates have an impact on not only the absorption, but also on the balance of payments. By raising interest rates, you hope that the money will come in. And when the money will come in, uh, it will take care of the balance of payment deficit. So, you reach a point like this on the x x curve. But when you reach a point like this on the x x curve, you are above the u dash u dash curve, you again face a situation of unemployment in the economy. If you have to take care of the unemployment, you have to reduce the tax rates to reach the point on u dash u dash curve. You are back to internal uh, internal balance, but you are now below the x x curve. If you are below the x x curve, again there is a balance of payment deficit. If you have to take care of the deficit, now you have another set of instrument which is the interest rate. So, you increase the interest rates, again you reach a point on the x x curve, but you are above the u dash u dash curve. So, again you reduce the tax rate and this goes on till you reach the equilibrium. So, this diagram shows that if you combine interest rates with tax ratios, you can achieve your internal and external balance. Now, this happens because you have introduced capital flows. So, in the wake, in the light of the capital flows, which are a function of the differential interest rates, the set of stable instruments <coughs> changes. It is not that you, you consider expenditure policy entirely for the the internal balance. Now, the f expenditure po policy has to be bifurcated, interest rates uh, is the monetary policy, this goes for external balance and tax ratios goes for maintaining the internal balance. So, Mundell, the professor Mundell was concerned about pairing of instruments with targets. So, in this scenario, he said that uh, these will be the new set of instruments. Now, further uh, we what we could do is we will we will cover it up in the next class is now we will relax one of the other assumptions that we had made when we started doing the open economy model was we had assumed sterilization of the reserves. We had assumed that any changes in reserves will not have any impact on the money supply. Now, we will relax that and then we will try to study whether monetary and fiscal policies have any impact on the changes in incomes. And you will see uh, a different set of results, monetary policy you will see becomes effective in the case of flexible exchange rates, while fiscal policy will become effective in the case of fixed exchange rate with capital mobility. So, these are the set of uh, results that we will try to prove uh, tomorrow. For today, we, we are ending up here. If there are any questions and qu queries, I will be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you.